when uh, Jack Darling dropped that sitter mm. in the goal square moments later. What's, yeah. What what was going through your head then? Uh, I think it's fair to say he would have been, if we lost, he wouldn't have been on the plane on the way back home. He's first to put his hand up for that. But, nah, look, I, people give JD a hard time and um, I, I'm sort of, look, I'm probably the only West Coast supporter or West Coast person that's happy he dropped that mark because if he marked it and kicked the goal, we win by two kicks and then all of a sudden that play that ended up in my goal, it doesn't mean anything because yeah. we run by more than a couple yeah, of kicks. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, hey, thanks, mate. I bought him a few beers, JD. <laughs> so, yeah. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have Dom Sheed from the West Coast Eagles, former player of the Subiaco Lions and uh, a fellow Kalgoorlian go, going way back to, yeah, the early days. Um, Dom, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, mate. How does it feel never having to pay for a drink at the pub? <laughs> I, reckon that, I reckon that lasted about a day and a half, mate, <laughs> to be honest. We were, we were actually midway through celebrations two days after and I, I thought I'd see how long I could go without buying a beer and then Chris Maston, fellow teammate, said, nah, mate, it's your round. Get, get the fuck up. It's your round to buy a drink. So <laughs> it lasts about a day and a half, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So you, uh, you're doing. You, you've been kind of injured over the last kind of year or so. Um, what have you been doing in the meantime, mate? I was, yeah, it was a frustrating year for me because I um, did a full preseason and then I did my syndesmosis, needed surgery, um, returned to play, played one game and got stress fractures. So I got a little taste of coming back to AFL level, and then I was done for the year. So. Um, you know, I was just training to work back to play. And then when, when, um, when I got ruled out for the year, I was a bit sort of cooked. So, um, I went on my honeymoon to Europe. It was yeah, nice. Yeah. I saw that. So where did you go with, what, what's, what's the wife's name? Ah, uh, Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. So, so you and Brooke got married. Where did you get married? Uh, we got married at Vast Felix down South in, Ooh. yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful spot. Big turnout, boys get around it? Uh, yeah, we, we had quite a small crowd. I think we had 60 odd people there. Yeah. So they had a capacity limit and we sort of pumped it out, engaged and married within a couple months. So wow. um, looking back now is probably the best thing, best thing for us. But yeah, got to, I was lucky enough to do my honeymoon in Europe. I've never done a European summer before. So because the footy season is always yeah. um, during the summer months in Europe, um, I've never been before in the summer, so I, I loved it there, mate. I didn't want to come home, to be yeah. honest. We were there around the same time too. Yeah, we were because I messaged you. Yeah. I, I messaged you. you well, we got stuck in Amsterdam <laughs> airport, eh? You messaged me about that yeah. and I said to you, get there early. Mate, I got there. Did you there, listen? So I had a 10 o'clock flight and I got to Amsterdam airport at 4.30 in the morning. So I got there five and a half hours before my flight and I waited three and a half hours in line, just walking two steps, waiting, walking two steps. I walked over two Ks in line <laughs> in the Amsterdam airport, mate, because I think they were the staff were on strike or something like that over pay or something. So it, it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Did you get? Your, did you make your flight? Oh, I made my flight, but only because my missus flew out a couple of days before me and was like, this place is cooked. Make sure you get there <laughs> early. She had to go skip the whole queue and, yeah. yeah. Schiphol. Good yeah. old Schiphol Airport. I don't know if you had the same experience. Yeah, we, we went there um, and we got the heads up come four hours early. Yeah. We got there four hours early and we just went straight into the line. We waited for a bit and then we moved uh, like a snail and then the, yeah. there'd be the uh, the bags, you know, the, the x-ray section. Yeah. Um, they locked it off because they didn't want it to be overwhelming for the workers. Um. And then they kept us all like sheep. Like the cattle, yeah, well. and then they would release us uh, in increments. So it was a good system, but yeah, but like to be honest, three hours went not that like slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, where did you go um, in Europe? You went to you went to Holland or Netherlands? Yeah, I went to Amsterdam, and then I went. I did London. I did Marseille. I did um, Cadiz, a small little town called Cadiz in Spain, and. Where else do we go? We did Paris as well, which was nice. cool. So um, got a range of experiences and um, ate lots of good food and drank lots of good wine. So Spain was my favourite. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, beautiful spot. 
Yeah, did you bump into any Collingwood supporters? No, no, <laughs> it was great. No, no one's a fan over there. It's nice. Yeah, it's great. I walk around and people just look at me because I'm tall. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I had a couple of people yeah. in Venice. Um, my last trip, just gone, um, recognised me though. Yeah, really? From Sydney, yeah. I'm just like, it's crazy. Worldwide, mate, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but, yeah, so you're – you're back now and how's – are you ready for the next preseason? What's yeah. the go? Yeah, absolutely. I am sort of feel like I'm ready to get back to – I felt guilty because I felt like going into this off-season I didn't really deserve a break. Yeah. So I was sort of ready to get back into it straight away. But I've enjoyed some downtime and um, ankles all good now. So, yeah, can't wait for the warmer months and preseason to kick off. So a bit of a disappointing year last year for the boys. But – you know, everyone starts on zero points next year, so I think we're pretty keen to uh, get better. Yeah, yeah, mm. such a such a media trained answer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it's you know, it's how it is. Like, I love it. No, it's yeah, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a different looking club next year. We're not having JK there, and yeah. all the senior blokes are another year older. We'll probably go hard at the draft and pick up six or seven blokes there. So it'll be quite a young list. So it'll be interesting to see how we go. Yeah, you picked up a couple from over east. Who are you excited to play with? Um, Coming in. Look, I, I'm excited to see Campbell Chesser. He, he'll be going into his second year next year. He was, I think he was pick 11, pick 11 last year, I think. But um, once again, he hurt his ankle like me. So he missed that his whole first year. So I, I'm looking forward to see what he can do because he was quite a high pick for us and he looks like he's moving well at the moment. So, yeah, yeah. but there's plenty to look forward to, I think. Yeah. And what about your younger kind of doppelganger, Josh Rotham? What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, no, he's a, he goes all right, doesn't he? So are you, do you know him? Yeah, yeah, we grew him? up on the same street. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, no, he's going well, I think. Hopefully he's in for a big year, you know. Um, he's sort of um, a lot of the time been lacked opportunity through our back line being so strong. So, yep. um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens this year with him. But, you know, he's going to have to have another good preseason, I think. But I reckon he's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Who's, your, who's your toughest player that you play against? Across the AFL, um, Patrick Dangerfield is it was or was always difficult at a stoppage anyway. Um, he's like one ninety something centimeters and you know ninety something kilos. He's you can't even move him, so you have to try play him in a bit of a different way because he wants to feel your body and you know the minute he touches your body, he's he can control you and put you where you want. So you sort of have to start off him, and then if you start off him, he'll just get the ball. So. In terms of stoppage play, Patrick Dangerfield, but then around the ground, you've got blokes like uh, Took Miller, who I reckon's a gun, Dion Prestia. They just run so hard and so well, and especially offensively, they really test you out um, on that side of it. So, yeah, there's plenty of good players around the comp. They've all got their strengths for all different reasons, but they would be sort of the players which are hardest to play on, I reckon. Yeah. How, how what is it like building that tank up of running? You you, you go from amateur level to waffle level mm. to AFL level and and then you have to get into that elite mindset. How do you get from just going through it and then having to probably yak yeah. a couple of times and then just you're just going up and down? How do you get to that point? It, uh, it, uh, it took me years to get to like an elite level, not an elite level, but um, – you know, a level which is acceptable. So, you know, you come out of, um, you know, state 18s or junior levels and the fitness and the speed, it just goes to a whole nother level um, at AFL level. And that took me years to get. Some people are very naturally fit who slip in quite well straight away, but I was never a bloke. I wasn't, I, I, was, I, I was, my fitness was okay. Didn't really have much speed. So I sort of just moped around and that sort of doesn't cut it at AFL level. So I had to really work hard on building up my tank and I did a lot of speed training just to get to a level where, you know, I'm still probably the slowest out there, but at least I don't look too silly. Um, so it takes years. I mean, I remember my first uh, 2K time trial was 6.48 when I first come to the club, which was okay. But then, um, you know, just slowly I've nudged that all the way down to sort of like 612. So um, I've worked hard on it. And, you know, a lot of these boys are, um, they've all got their different sorts of strengths. And, um, you know, my my strength wasn't exactly running. So Jeez, I, I don't to, think I ever hit, I don't, I don't think I ever broke seven. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, well, you're a ruckman, mate. You don't need, you don't need to. Ask Nick Nat what, what he runs. He'd be over eight, I reckon. Yeah. Oh, man. So um, backtracking to you mentioned state 18s, what was your journey like going into AFL 
So you you well, let's actually go back to Kalgoorlie. Yeah, you're born in Kalgoorlie. Yeah, you're in a, you've got some indigenous in you. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't. No, no. fuck, no. I must have read the wrong thing. Yeah, someone, someone mentioned that. And I'm I, like, I get asked all the time, but not not as far as I know. Anyway, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, so I grew up Kalgoorlie. I was, um, you know, born and bred there. I had two brothers and a sister. And, um, you know, I loved, I loved playing sport. So I played a wide range of sports. I played tennis, hockey, cricket, basketball, um, y- you name it. I, I, I would have played it. And living yeah. in, a, in a town of Kalgoorlie, you get so many opportunities to play a wide range of sports because everything's only two minutes away or, and or it's, a, or it's the next field over on yeah. a Saturday, you know. So, so I, I, I love sport and, um, you know, um, I got asked once to come try out, um, what was it, Auskick, I think, to come fill in Auskick level. So I, I went and filled in Auskick level and I loved it. So I kept playing footy and, um, you know, before that, tennis was probably my number one sport growing wow. up. My parents met playing tennis. So, um, yeah, that was sort of our family sport. But then I just loved footy. I loved the team aspect to it. I loved the team dynamic. I loved how competitive it was. I loved running out with 21 of your mates trying to, tackle and beat the opposition. So that eventually took over. And, um, yeah, um, ever since then I got to an age where I think people started to say like, maybe you should move to Perth and give footy a go because I was going okay in Kalgoorlie, but I was traveling back and forth from Kalgoorlie to Perth to try out for the state 15s team, the schoolboy state 15s. And, um, I ended up making that team from living in Kalgoorlie, but my old man was forking out so much on plane flights to get me to training once a week and games and stuff. So eventually I moved to Perth and I was lucky enough to play state 15s. We won that tournament. It was played in WA. I played state 16s the following year and then I played two years of state 18s. So um, I played as a bottom major and then um, as a top ager too. And, you know, from there I went, got drafted at pick 11, which I was very fortunate to and, drafted to West Coast, who was a club I barracked for. So I had quite a smooth sort of ride into the AFL system, different to a lot of blokes. I was very – I played in a lot of state teams and did the AIS academies and stuff like that. So there's all different ways and pathways to get into the AFL, but I'd say that mine was pretty smooth in the end. Yeah. Did mm. you did you even play Waffle at all? Yeah, I did. I think I played about 10, 10 that's three right. games for that's Subi. Right. That's yeah. right. Fucking Subi Echo. I've just gone blank. Yeah. Just listen to yeah. your story and how smooth it is. Yeah, but um, that's the thing. I only played 10 games that year because it would have been sort of a full year of waffle level, but then these AIS teams and the State 18 sort of take over yeah. and take priority. So I would have loved to have played more um, – Sub, at Subi League level because I felt like I probably got a bit more out of that playing against men and that quicker pace rather than playing against sort of 18-year-olds. But, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I remember the the brief moment you were there because I was there at the time and then you came in and we'd be, I'd be like, oh, look at this kid. He's, he's doing well. <laughs> and the next minute you're drafted. I'm just like, that's sick. That's yeah. awesome. Where, where did you, um, whereabouts did you grow up in Kalgoorlie? Was it like Hannon's Way or? Somerville. I was Somerville. in Somerville, so um, Carew Street, um, sort of as you're coming into town, yeah. Great Eastern Highway, just yeah, on the left there. Past Anzac Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah around there. I was so. at Broadwood, right across the road. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah I, I love that area. There were nice big blocks there. We had sort of a basketball court, room to kick the footy, room to play cricket. It, it was awesome. Yeah, just got fucking hot, but you climatized pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah, you just jump in the pool. Yeah. Which club did you play for in Cow? Mine's Rovers. Nice. So you were a red leg, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. We didn't never used to like you blokes. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't get to play too much league footy there um, for mines, but I played all three Colts level in that. Yeah. But I actually played for JPC Saints as the junior, the school team or whatever first. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember, mm. I remember the JPC um, boys Yeah. in my year. Um, we had Gavin Armstrong and oh, – yeah. Couple of other them, remember those? Yeah, those yeah. No, I've I, I run into Gav, Gavin, Gavin occasionally. Yeah, yeah, he's. I think he's living over in Sydney at the moment. I think yeah, working away. Sparky, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. on the tunnels there. Done well, done yeah. well. So, um, so you got drafted, and then you're you're already living in Perth. So that's sweet. Yep. And then how long before you got your first game? Uh, I got my first game. Did a full preseason in my first year. Um. And then I got a debut round one, actually. I got yeah. a debut round one in my first year. So I remember we were playing the Western Bulldogs and Simo said, you're going to play your first game. 
um, a couple of days out. I said, sweet, how good? He said, but you're the sub. And I hated the sub. I hated the sub rule. I reckon my first 15 games, I was a sub 10 times. I um, think everybody hates it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, round one, I was a sub and come on at the start of the last quarter. And, um, yeah, I remember Nick Nat tapping the ball down to me and got tackled holding the ball and <laughs> that was it. And then I got dropped the next week. So in my first year, I played 10 games where I was sort of in and out a little bit, but um, I think I was better for it in the end. Yeah. And then did you play um, uh, state footy there, um, or waffle footy when you, yeah. you were dropped? Yep, yep. So we were aligned with um, East Perth at yep. that time. So I played I played a lot of what, waffle footy, waffle footy, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you were – kind of getting getting to that point, again, backtracking a little bit. Hmm. When did you know you were like, I um, have a chance, I have a chance. So you got, you said you got told. Yeah. I, I was, should give I was, it a go. Yeah, I was living in Kalgoorlie at the time and, um, you know, I, was, I was, thought I was playing good footy there, but yeah. I just never knew, I never quite knew unless I moved to Perth how, um, how I'd match up, you know. So, yeah. um, but when I played, I think I probably <laughs> thought that, if I give it a real shot, I'm a chance of making AFL was when I made the state 15s team. Yeah. yeah. So that was when I thought, hey, state 15s, I could, from here, I can make 16s, I can make 18s, and that's going to hopefully be the way that. Keep that, that momentum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think around that age. Who, yeah. who was your Who was your favourite player growing up? Hey, I loved, I loved Chris Judd, Ben Cousins, Daniel Kerr. Dean Cox. So I was a mad West Coast supporter <laughs> growing up. So watching them win the 06 flag and um, just the way that midfield operated, um, yeah, it was amazing. So that they were sort of my idols growing yeah. up. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> when you when you got in, because you came in after McGovern did, right? From uh, memory? Yes. Yeah. And then and then did he take you in first or because he's a Kalgoorlie boy as well? Uh, well, he didn't spend too much time in Kalgoorlie, um, but – Nah, he probably wasn't the one. Probably Chris Maston was the one that sort of took me under his wing, which was good. Um, we had a lot of good times together and, you know, he he taught me you have to train extremely hard. He taught me training standards and it took him years to get to an elite level of training. Um, but he sort of took me under his wing and taught me that. So, um, yeah, we're still good mates at the moment. It was sad to see him get a... Get the flick happens to the best of us. Yep, you got a premiership though, and we do. And and yeah, when that when that final siren went, um, mm. I, I was actually in Europe oh, somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and I was watching. I was I wasn't even watching it, but mm. I had it on the phone, like the stats. And I was looking at it at half time, and I'm like, oh well, that's that sucks. It's a bummer. It's a yeah. bummer. And then I was like, all right, let, let's let's bring it up. Let's have a look, see where they're at. And then I'm like, fuck. Like two and a half minutes to go. And then I was like, all right, I'll tune in the radio. And the first name I hear, yeah. Dom Sheen's taking the mark. And I'm like, oh, I know that guy. Ah, uh, there you go. And yeah. then and then and then I'm just like kind of like just sitting there. But we're having breakfast mm. in Delft in the Netherlands. And my and my wife's just like, oh, what's what's happening? You know? Mm. I'm like, oh, Dom's kicked the guy ahead, you know? And then and then yeah, I had had a win. But um you you you're going you're going um, through the motions, and uh, you had uh, all the boys are getting around each other. What was your um, What was your first kind of thought after the siren went? Like, obviously, you won. Yeah. What's next in that mindset? Uh, oh, um, you know, your body just sort of takes over with emotion. You don't know what to do. Yeah. So, I think there's footage of me sort of jumping up and down, not really knowing what to do. Where there probably wasn't. And that we didn't win the game until that final siren. Like you look at last year's grand final and the game was probably done at, you know, half time, three quarter time. So they've got an opportunity to sort of soak, soak it up, soak up the crowd, enjoy it with your teammates. Whereas us, it was right up until the siren actually went. So when the when it went and you just realised it was like nobody knew what nobody knew what to do. Yeah. Nobody knew what to do. So it's just such a long year. You know, you start preseason in November. And then you're playing a grand final on the last day in September. It's yeah. it's such a long season. So, um, you know, you're absolutely exhausted by the time yeah. that final siren's done. When uh, Jack Darling dropped that sitter mm. in the goal square moments later, yeah. what, what was going through your head then? Uh, 
I think it's fair to say he would have been, if we lost, he wouldn't have been on the plane on the way back home. He's the first to put his hand up for that. But, nah, look, I, people give JD a hard time and um, I, I'm sort of, look, I'm probably the only West Coast supporter or West Coast person that's happy he dropped that mark because if he marked it and kicked the goal, we win by two kicks and then all of a sudden that play that ended up in my goal, it doesn't mean anything because yeah. we run by more than a couple yeah, of kicks. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, hey, thanks, mate. I bought him a few beers, JD. <laughs> so, yeah. Nah, but yeah, it's just one of the, one of those moments you make mistakes and, yeah, you get yeah, on with it. In that moment, it's it's super hard to train for it. It's impossible to train for oh, it. You literally, that's what I say, you literally cannot train to – kick a goal in front of a hundred thousand people. Like I don't care how many kicks that you have out on the training track, you can have your routine, you can do everything right in the lead up to it. But um, until you actually have the footy in front of a hundred thousand people, you just don't know what you, you just don't know what's going to happen. And yeah, yeah, mentally, physically. So exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's players that put the headphones in with the crowd going through. And you can do all of those sorts of things, right? But is it the same? Yeah, what's mm. your what's your like kind of uh, superstition uh, when you're training? Um, I, or, I, before a game day, even. Yeah, look, I wouldn't say that I've got any superstitions. You know, bloke, blokes have them, but I think the best preparation is a flexible one. So you know, if if something doesn't go your way that day, it doesn't really matter. You sort of adjust and just get on with it. So, yeah. you know, blokes have weird ones like putting the left boot on first or, you know, no, you, nobody's allowed to touch their boots or I don't know, just weird things, but I, I don't have any of that. Mate. Who's got like a weird one that you can think of? Um, well, I'm pretty sure it's Yoey who you're not allowed to touch his boots pre-game or something like that, but, yeah, weird. Have you given it a crack? And no, 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 I don't want to wig him out because we need him. We need him to play yeah. well. <laughs> um, um, what's been your biggest kind of setback? I mean, obviously you, your injury. Um, let's say, let's go pre-premiership. Yeah. You, you've played your first game. You've had your first season in and out of the team. Mm-hmm. And then uh, second season, you're rolling a little bit more. What's been kind of the key element, the, the X factor in your career? Um. The X factor or the setbacks? What, Let's start with setbacks. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, my transition into the AFL was quite smooth in the end. Obviously, mm. I had to move away from family and stuff, which was difficult. But, um, you know, when the hard work really started when I got into the AFL system. And I reckon I've been at the club for 10 seasons now, so for 10 years. And I reckon seven out of those 10 years, I've been dropped at least once in that year. So, um, you know, I've played 140 something games, but they haven't been consecutive. I've been in and out of the team. So sort of dealing with playing waffle and not being in form and coming in and out and trying to continue to get better and, you know, keep, keep that focus on what you want to do and the confidence in in your ability. There's been plenty of times where in 2018, for example, the grand final year, I, I got dropped three times that year three times that year. So here I am as a 24 year old in and out of the team thinking, am I even good enough to play AFL? Like, yeah. is, it, is it for me? So, you know, just dealing with those sorts of things and overcoming that have been sort of my biggest setbacks apart from injuries themselves. Yeah. So how, how mentally do you, how, how do you go through that mentally? Cause I remember Monday night vision mm. in the waffle level. Yeah. And I just be like, fuck, I did, I didn't do that good that game. I'm going to get, roasted here yeah what about you when you do you know you're going to get dropped or is, is um, it sometimes a surprise or I, I, I've I'm, I'm always sort of I've always sort of expected it I, I've thought I was one of those players who have always been three games off three bad games away from being dropped you know that, that's why or, I've sort of yeah oh, not completely just back to the waffle so I can probably get away with playing one bad game I play two bad games I'm oh shit Three games, I'm dropped. You know, yeah. I'm back to the waffle. So, um, but you know, de- dealing with that, I think it's more so just um, coming back to one. Footy's not the be all and end all. Um, and secondly, is you've you've got to you've got to be able to take feedback in those meetings, and you've got to be open minded, and um, you've got to be willing to to learn and put your hand up when when you haven't been good enough. But also, above all, I think it's just. Um, I call it the balance wave. Have you heard of that? You know, so um, 
you know, things are never as good as they seem or never as bad as they seem. So people in the AFL who ride this emotion of I've had a great game, I'm the best player ever to, oh, no, I'm the worst player ever and they just on this constant yo-yo tend to not make it in the AFL system. Whereas if you get players, um, you know, like Luke Shuey does it and Matt Prittis, I remember, does it, they're just these balanced people who whether they play a good game or a bad game, they never get ahead of themselves or two down. So they just keep this consistent personality personality and attitude towards football, which I've tried to take on board and I feel as though that's really helped me, especially when early days I was in and out of the waffle a lot. Yeah, that mm. really applies to a lot of different areas in life as well, business. Absolutely, as yeah. Well, it's like uh, f- for me I call that day one. It's like it's always day one. Yeah. I mean appreciate and like, enjoy the enjoy the wins, Yeah, get around it, but then – you're back on the plane or the next day you're on, you're in recovery and you're just straight back into, all right, thinking about the next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you are dropped, what is, how do you get back into it? In terms of? In terms of the side. You just, you've got to go back and do what the coaches have asked, whether that's, you know, skills, better GPS running wise, better defensively. You just got to, do what your coaches ask of you and, um, you know, apply that at a lower level and string together a few good games. Yeah. 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 And what's been like a, a long, the longest stint whilst you're being a listed player of you outside? Um, I played probably half a season, I reckon, in my third year. Yeah. Half a season in the waffle straight. Yeah. 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 What did that feel like for your kind of Yeah. Oh, hard, morale? but once again – you just go back to, hey, it's not the be-all and end-all. It's yeah. not as bad as it seems, you know. Let's just play some good footy and enjoy it. And I find that um, when I've played my worst footy in my career, it's always because I haven't really quite been enjoying football. So I guess I, I really just try to get back to, hey, go out there, you play foot, you played footy as a kid because I loved it and I had yeah. lots of fun and that's what got me to this point. So I've got to always, whatever I do, just continue, enjoy what I'm doing. So when yeah. I took the pressure of performing out of it and just said, let's go have fun, um, that's when I started playing, you know, a lot better and um, building momentum through the waffle and those weeks yeah. to just have fun playing waffle and string together some good games in the end. So you're, you're saying it's not the be all end all. Um, but you haven't had a job in a in a mm, while yeah. outside of footy. Footy what you, is a job. What you, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, the uh, the basic jobs. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Non sportsman job. <laughs> what do you think you'd be doing right now if you didn't pick up the ball, the footy? Uh, um, I'd I'd be Sparky, I think. So yeah, my my old man has an electrical business. He's had it for over thirty years. And my brother Alex, you know Alex. Alex, My brother Alex Sheed. Alex Sheed. Yeah, he, he <laughs> was at Sheed, yeah course. he was at Subi when you were there, I think. And trying to remember. Um, yeah, so that we run a family Sparky business, and um, you know that's what I'd be doing. Yeah. Mm. Has it moved over to Perth yet, or is it yeah, still a cow Perth, branch? Perth and Kalgoorlie branch. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's nice. Yeah. And what's it called? Give it a plug. Sheet Electrical. I've got the hat on, mate. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there. <laughs> Can't see it from this side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, I remember when I moved to. Perth, I went and told my old man that I wanted to move to Perth to give footy a crack. And obviously he was a, um, gave me every opportunity to do what I wanted to do. And I went and told my brother, Alex, who I'm super close to, he's a year older than me, um, that I'm moving to Perth to play footy. And um, we were living in Cal at the time. And he said, oh, right, all right, well, I'm going to have to come with you, aren't I? So he moved to Perth, him and I together. And then he started up the She Electrical branch in Perth. And yeah sort of gone from there. It's been around for about 10 years now here. Yeah. Mm. So when, when you did move to Perth, you were doing something along yeah, the Yeah, I, I was mid halfway through a Sparky apprenticeship. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was um, yeah. twisting wires at the time. So that's something that you're probably looking into when the day comes? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd say I wouldn't want to be uh, crawling through roof spaces at age 30 or 35, but, um, you know, being in the business management side of the business yeah. um, is, Off the some, tools. Yeah, is something that I'm more interested in for yeah. sure. What about um, invo- keeping yourself involved with the club on a coaching level or anything like that? Um, look, I, I sort of haven't ruled that out, but I sort of always told myself that once I was finished um, playing AFL, that was sort of, I was happy to get out of that industry and, um, and, do something different. I don't yeah. think co- I don't think um, coaching is something which right now really interests me. 
Yeah. Mm. Do you have um, other future kind of aspirations in terms of? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, there's obviously certain goals that I, I want to hit and stuff, but I just really want to um, over the next few years entrench myself in um, the family business and find a role there and then sort of um, reassess as, as time goes by. Yeah. 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 And, uh, back at, back at the club again. Um, when you do start up, what's something that you reckon you'll do, do first or focus on first? What's your first goal? Um, it, it's going to be to get my body, um, which I'm working through at the moment is to get my body to a position where it can hold up doing a full preseason. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be nice, um, you know, because a full preseason in the AFL means absolutely every like means a lot goes a long way to having a good consistent year. Yeah. So it'd be that, but um, you know, making sure fitness levels are right and got enough speed under my belt. But then I really want to start, um, you know, I really want to use my smarts this year to help a lot of the younger boys and stuff around stoppages and midfield crafts. So that that's probably something that. I'll look at doing this year, especially with a lot of younger blokes at our football club and we're about to bring in six or seven more. Yeah. Something which um I feel as though I'd like to take the lead with. Yeah. And have a bit of a leadership role. Yeah, yeah. yeah um and it's a um time flies, right? I'm one of the older boys now, <laughs> which is uh <laughs> weird, weird, weird to think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got the accolade of premiership player, and then they'll see that. And obviously you've got the accolade of go ahead goal in that. But, <laughs> but um yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's about a bunch of respect. It's about respect. Um, talking about, I had another question in mind: the endorsement deals. Yeah, have you have you had a few? Uh, yeah, a few little ones here and there, but um, you know, you get, you know, your big endorsement deals go sort of to your Nick Nats, your yeah, yeah. Paddy Creeps, your Paddy Dangerfields. Yeah, you know, yeah. your, your big dogs. There's probably a um, bunch of, you know, ten twenty blokes in the AFL. We get the real big endorsement deals, but you know, I'm signed, um, I'm signed up with ASICs and a few little things on the side, but nothing, nothing major. If you could choose any brand to do a kind mm. of endorsement deal with anywhere in the world, what would it be? Any brand. Yeah. Or any, any collaboration, mm. Dom Sheed ASICs or yeah, well, Dom Sheed Vans. <laughs> um, but I haven't really, I haven't really thought about it. What would be yours? Do you have one in mind? Oh, it depends on um, where they're at with integrity and all that sustainability mm. and because and, there's a lot of fluff about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, Nike would be cool. Yeah. Um, but, oh, dear. Um, I need, I did a Pentanet thing. That was cool. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. I was on the buses and billboards and stuff. Did yeah. you see that? Uh, I, I saw your head everywhere <laughs> on the back of those buses, <laughs> mate. Um, <laughs> I, um Owner of that business is a good bloke, isn't he? Steve Cornish. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a good fella. Yeah. Um, no, nah, but that's a good question. Um, man, that's something I'll go away and have a bit of a think about. I yeah. Reckon. Yeah. Maybe bully, bully Butcher, if you can get me yeah. on board, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bully Butcher is like a dream. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shouting them out all the time. And yeah. the, the meat's quality. And Amazing, isn't it? Such a good thing. And the whole, the whole influencer thing is, I haven't blown it out of proportion, I don't think. But yeah. I'm, Taking advantage while I can, but at the same time, I know there's an end point, yeah. much like there's an AFL player's end point. Yeah. What do you do to make that, I don't know, prolong that if you wanted yeah. to, but obviously you get older, you get to that retirement age, what's next? Yeah. And for me, I, I see very similar alignments between um, the celebrities or the influencers of the world and, and footy players, um, obviously not physically, but- mm. You know, you, you get drafted, you have to work through the system. You have to have a mental sort of the mental game you play to get into the, to get the games. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get a base salary and then you get match matches as well. If it's in your contract. Yeah. 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 And then with influencers, you know, you get a, you get a, a gig here and mm. there. It may be good for two, three years, but then you just spat out. Like, yeah. We're going to go with someone else. Yeah. There you go. And, and um, yeah. Yeah. But you're, you're 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 not in the waffle phase anymore, are eh? you? You're in the AFL. You've broken <laughs> through that barrier, have you? <laughs> I don't I, I don't know how I rank that. I think I'm definitely more national now. Obviously, yeah, being recognised where, wherever I go, um, definitely more recognised when when I was um, more than when I was in the waffle. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm noticing that the kids nowadays, they're unless they're fully obsessed with AFL, 
Yeah. They don't really care. Yeah. They 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 notice yeah. more of the people on their on their phones. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. You um, know. Yeah, the kids are glued to their phones these days, aren't they? So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's like it's what own. they watch. That's yeah, what I want to help with. So yeah. yeah. But um are your uh you, you mentioned your missus, she's on uh on the TikTok all the time. Yeah. Loves um, it. Um surely she knows me. She seen me on the uh, screen. <laughs> yeah, so I actually told her, I said, I'm going on the Sevo um Sevo show tomorrow. And um she goes, Who's that? And um I explained and um she was actually like sort of stopped me and was like, Hold on. No, I've seen I've seen him somewhere. Is he on TikTok? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's big on TikTok and she got up a few of your TikToks and stuff like that. But <laughs> I um I personally don't have TikTok, but she's yeah. um, she loves it. She flicks through all the times. Um, so what she does, she might get one good video in every 50 she watches and then that's the one she'll forward to me. So I'll yeah. let her sift through the garbage. She's your filter. She'll do, she's my filter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about like you've got, you're on Instagram as well. Um, you're, you're watching my stories, which is cool. Um, do you do the reels at all? Do you watch? Do you get sucked in in that? I, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I, I watch the reels. So, what's your what's your general theme? If you opened up your discovery page right now, what would it be on, mate? I can, look. To be honest, <laughs> Cold, a, yeah. a lot of a lot of cooking and a lot of golf. Really? Yeah. So I follow a lot of cooking pages and stuff like that. So there's golf. Oh yeah. There's golf. Oh yes. Um, a lot of the Formula point that, One point stuff. That to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. And right now it's a um, lot of NBA stuff popping up, but Ooh. I love watching the cooking reels. Yeah. I'm really interested in that. Like have you have you seen a guy called Chebo, Chebo's Burgers? No. I highly recommend you you, you go there to you him. Go. He loves his burgers. Dude. Right. Um, kid Chebo. over in the, uh, yeah, Chebo, C-H-E-B-B-O from Chebo. Sydney. Great, great guy. He's got, he's got some, he's got a wicked following. And um, yeah, I'll definitely get him on. Oh, Chebo Burgers. There che you go. Yeah, right, dude, there you go. He, he's Give making some cracker. There he's making some cracker videos. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, what, what got you into cooking? That's cool, mate. I yeah, I love cooking. I do cook most nights and love trialing a few different things and that. But I think because I moved out of home at age fifteen and moved out with my brother, um, I had to learn how to cook. Because I had to, <laughs> I had to eat food, so um, you know a lot of people these days are moving out of home at I don't know, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, or whatever. But I was fifteen, so I had to learn to sort of fend for myself, and just over the years, just eventually gained an interest in it and become more confident. And yeah, so you cook uh, your pre game meals as well. Yep. Cool. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll cook all of that. So, what's um, your what's your go to pre game meal you cook for yourself? Um, well, there's probably you know. My my favourite's probably like the traditional carbonara. Very yeah. easy to do. It's five yeah. ingredients, um, you know, with your guanciale and, yeah, it's beautiful. But um, all sorts of pastas I love to cook. I love to sort of smoke a lot of meats as well. So that's where Nate that – You're not even 30 yet. You're not allowed. Yeah, you love I know. golf. You love cooking. You love smoking Yeah, meat. I know. I, You're not I even feel 30, like an, I feel like an old man. I need new, <laughs> I need new hobbies, mate. But um, You like mowing the lawn as well? You like keeping the, the lawn fresh? Yeah, I, I, I do. I do. <laughs> You're, not, I do. You're in your 30s already. I know, but um, yeah, I know. I'm an old man at the moment. I saw on Instagram there was like the, the dad um, – pack or whatever and it was like mowing the lawn barbecuing yeah, yeah that's it <laughs> yeah no, i'd tick like three of the four boxes yeah. i was like oh no yeah <laughs> i'm definitely i'm definitely I'm not, I'm not really a f big fan of golf i like i do watch the golf stuff yeah but <laughs> i fucking cooked it yeah i'm so shit <laughs> and i get frustrated so quickly uh, as well um it's not it's not yeah. my game well, I, I used to get frustrated as well, but then I go back to once again, why am I playing golf? I'm playing it to have fun. Yeah. Hey, don't get frustrated. I like it's going okay. to the driving range. Wem yeah. Wembley driving range yep. is elite. Yeah. yeah. It's and great. then go for there. But, uh, mm. but yeah, um, when, when you did when you did go and start cooking for yourself, what was your go-to meal then? I, it was ste strictly, it was steak with no seasoning on it and then <laughs> um, and then boiled veggies. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So Fry that, egg? Yeah, like, no, nah, not not quite like you, but, um, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, shocking, but just uh, over time. Yeah, I just go bit. hard on the meat now. Yeah. Like, it's been serving me well. I, yeah. I avoid, I try to avoid the, the heavy carbs because the meat's doing me wonders. Yeah. I did keto, actually, for um, 
when I was, I think it was when I was at West Perth. Yeah. And I was really strict on it. Yeah. And when I first started, it was fucked. Yeah. But then it, it, I just hit like a this point and it was just, I was just on. Um, so what, are you still doing the keto diet? No, no. Nah, I'm not so doing any diet at the moment. Just trying to go heavy, mate. Yeah, as yeah. much as I can. There's yeah. no, like, it's, it's really hard to socialize on a, on a strict sort of thing yeah. when yeah. you're, a, when you're a player. Cause I remember when, when I was at Subi, um, I, I quit drinking yeah. completely Yeah, for like two years and I saw a big difference. Yeah. And then when I went to West Perth, I was like, all right, how can I get my energy levels up? Yeah. Cause I'm like super pumped before yeah. a game. And then, um, first, second quarter in, I'm like lapsing. Yeah. And like guys are taking no dos. Yeah. Yeah. Or like some, some like weird potions and yeah, shit. Yeah. And then I'm just like, what the fuck? How can I get the edge for myself? Yeah. And then, yeah, keto was for me. Oh, there you go. And then I was pretty depleted at the end of the game. And then I'd have that one sugar rush, like the can of Coke at the end of the game. Bang. Or the power <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. But yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. You're, you're 27 now. Mm. Yeah. And you, you're, yeah, you love your cooking, you love your golf, you've got a wife, kids, thoughts? Uh, at some stage in the future. Yeah. yeah I think um, my wife and I are just loving life at the moment, being how we are. So it's, um, you know, freshly married and, yeah. you know, Bruce, she's got a good job. She loves her job and, yeah, we're just enjoying cruising along at the moment, but at some point for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Does the AFL have or does the, do the Eagles have a rule of uh, – no unprotected sex in, in January. <laughs> hey, well, it's not going very well because uh, there's that many kids <laughs> at the football club. Um, <laughs> but, nah, well, Luke, Luke Shuey had a kid born on grand final week in 18. Oh, shit. It was grand, like literally born the net. No, so his missus couldn't, his wife couldn't come to the game. I think it was born like the day after or like, a day or two before. So that would have been pretty hectic to deal with. Yeah. But yeah. worked out well for him. He's a Norm Smith meddler. So it's probably the probably the opposite. Yeah, he was buzzing. He was yeah, like, whatever happens. Probably, hey, gonna... Jan, boys, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone else did that, had a recent one, um, Melbourne player. Get his name. Um, uh, Danaher, the, the one with the mullet. What's his name? What, um, the Melbourne player? The Melbourne player. Um, he had to go for a run. Uh, and uh, go mm. see see his pregnant wife. He had to travel back or something. Yeah, there trying you go. to trying to remember it. Do you remember who it was? No, yeah. but yeah. Um, so giving giving the kids some value now. Mm. Your your mindset clearly is you, you love what you do. Yeah, and that's worked out for you. Yeah, and you've had setbacks and you came overcame them and just stuck to it. You listen to someone like Chris Maston. Yeah. Took him under. He took you under his wing. Um, and then now you're giving it back to the younger kids, which is mm. cool. Um, say I'm in my starting high school and yeah. I love footy and I love everything, live and breathe it. And I've got a pretty decent left foot on me, yeah. you know, from the boundary <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just want to get to AFL. What do you suggest for me to do? Uh, well, you're going to have to, um, make sacrifices, right? Like you're going to miss out. I missed out on a lot of things as a young kid, you know, parties and, you know, all of that. So you, you're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to work extremely hard um, and you're going to have to enjoy the hard work. You're going to have mm. to, you know, so running and throwing up all the time and, you know, working on your skills and, you know, kicking on both feet. You've got you've got to find a way to enjoy that because it can get quite difficult. So um, I'd say train extremely hard, really narrow in on what it is that you need to be better at to mm. make it. Um, try to find a good mentor of some sort. And then above all, you have to enjoy, you have to enjoy what you do. You, do, you just have to, it doesn't matter. And that, that's not even footy. That's, I feel as though that's any job, that's any industry you're in. You're only going to do good at it if you enjoy it. So, yeah. um, and that's probably the biggest learning I've taken and would pass on. Yeah. 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 And your your biggest skill set early on? What did you hone in on? Uh, mine, mine a lot was my fitness, but also it was building side. I knew that I had to put on weight um, to become an inside midfielder. So I was about 
you know, 70 kilos or something like that. It's sort of 10, 15 kilos underweight. So I worked hard on putting on weight and um, midfield craft and being out of run. Yeah. 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 If you were um, – if you were never drafted to the Eagles, which other club would you have preferred? Um, that's a good question. I, I'd love – a I'd love Gold Coast. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> I, 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 You're a beach boy. Mate, I'm from you know I'm country town, small country town. Yeah, out back Western Australia. Um, I can do Perth because it's not too big and crowded and um, very easy, sort of slow going lifestyle here, which I love. So I don't think that moving to a Sydney or a Melbourne based club would be for me. I'd love to be you know Gold Coast. You know it's not. Not a big footy state, nice beaches, nice weather. That's yeah. what I'd love. Can still get around and no Can one's still get you. around. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what about Perth in general? If if there was another city, you've travelled now. Yeah. Where Where else would you live in the world? Where else would I live in the world? So it's funny you ask yourself. I was having this conversation with um, Brooke the other day, and you know, would we would love to go and um, get a one-way ticket to Spain and go live in one of the small coastal towns where, you know, life's easy, you walk everywhere, it's good weather, yep. it's beautiful food, you know, um, just go do that for sort of six months or a year and just live this really slow-paced life. Yeah. That's what I'd love to do. We went to a town called Alicante, which is in the south of Spain, and it was that yeah. coastal, slow-paced yeah town you would have yeah you just mentioned and it's just like a couple of hours train up to Barcelona. Did you go to Barcelona? Yeah, went to Bars flew in there. Yeah. 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 Um and oh it was magnificent. The Sangrias. Yeah. Get on the Sangrias. Tinto de Verano. Tinto de Verano is it cold? Yeah. It's like red wine with lemonade. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's like a sangria, but it's just like it's, and that's what they were drinking in Spain everywhere yeah. you went. Sun goes down at 10 30 at night, oh. then you got like amazing a siesta in the middle of the day. Yeah, my, my kind of life. At that, yeah, it yeah. was it was unusual at the start, but then I was like, no, this is great. It's great. I have a big feed in the morning, and days are so long. Pass out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, are you, where would you live in the world? What about, where would I was the Oh, I'd go to Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah, yeah. Where, where my wife's from. It's yeah. gorgeous there, and everything's accessible. And I mean, I wouldn't mind Spain either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anywhere in Europe that has a decent healthcare system. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked with. Yeah. But um, the Netherlands have very high tax. Oh, I do. And that. yeah, you don't. Yeah, you, you just get by, and yeah. and that's enough. Yeah. You know. But yeah. um, yeah, uh, Netherlands for me. Yeah. Um, we went to Paris as well, but I wouldn't live in Paris. Maybe south of France. Yeah. Um, Italy, oh, I would definitely give that a crack. Yeah. I didn't get time to go there. I've heard good things. But it's great. Yeah. It's great. But, yeah. You you mentioned um, uh, the the alcohol for a second. Are you a connoisseur of anything? Like you've got I, your cooking. Do you like your reds? I, I, lo I love wine. Yeah? Yeah, I love wine. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that um, – you know, I can taste a difference in a $50 bottle and a $100 bottle, but <laughs> I'll drink something and I'll, I'll yeah. either like it or not like it. But, yeah, I, you know, I'm, Chris Maston's in the wine industry at the moment, so he's always bringing samples around to my house and, oh, yeah. yeah, he loves it. So, um, yeah. That's, yeah. I um, enjoy it. You, you, your taste palate does mature a little bit. For sure. When you get older. Yeah. And I, I always thought I was allergic to wine because it, oh, it would fuck me up <laughs> straight away. I remember when I was 18, when I turned 18. Yeah. And my, my birthday's always, <clears throat> oh, um, my birthday's on the 1st of January. So it'd always be a New Year's Eve sort of thing. Oh, yeah. And um, Kalgoorlie, the scene is Kalgoorlie. Yeah. Mates come over and we're playing beer pong. But the alcohol of choice is a goon. Oh. Cooler bar, fruity Lexia. Yeah. <laughs> and little bits of it's okay. Yeah. But we were playing all night and I was just yakking. Just, just bad. Never again. But ever since then, I didn't drink wine for, yeah. for the longest time. See, I think you only need a bad experience on a, a one bad experience on a certain drink, and it turns you off. Yeah. So mine was Carlton Dry yeah. the beer, and um, you know, massive night on that, and yeah, took it too far, and then now just can't 
like can't drink Carlton Dry. Yeah. Like, I like, like, like all other beers, but I think you only need that one experience. And, yeah. Mine yeah. was my first beer that I had experience with in Cal. <laughs> yeah. Ted's. To oh, yeah. dry. Yeah. In the, in the railways uh, club rooms. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, beer in general, I was off it for years. Yeah. Because we had uh, Rookie Day at Subiaco. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's fucked. And then, yeah. and then after like the, the footy trips. Yeah. The footy trips. Oh, I was, I was off, I was off wine and I was off beer. Well, so it doesn't the, leave you with much. No, because <laughs> I, I started drinking ciders. Yeah. And then, and then Jackson Coke was a good one. And then any, any spirits mixed in. Yeah. But then I just felt like a teenage girl drinking yeah. all the time like that. But then at 26, um, I got a red wine bottle of wine gifted to me and I'm like, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Loved it. Done. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then, but Miss- white wine, no. Oh, really? Still fucks me up. Yeah. It gives me a headache instantly. Yeah. So I love, uh, I like white wine. I think, I think people give white wine a bit of a, um, bit of a hard time because you go to all of these events, right? And you be, you know, bowls or whatever and you drink white wine and you drink in the house white wine which is obviously very sort of cheap headachey yeah. sort of it's a hangover oh. in a glass but if you drink like a nice bottle of white wine um that's just as good as a nice bottle of red i think do you have a go-to oh, i like to try all different things i'm writing to a lot of the natural stuff at the moment a lot of the yeah. natural wines so we drink a fair the organic stuff? Yeah, a lot of the organic stuff. There's a lot of um, people down south, Margaret River Way, doing a lot of cool things with like biodynamic and yeah. organic and stuff. Maybe so, that's your endorsement deal. Well, hey, who knows? But um, yeah, so, but I like to try a lot of different things, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm open to anything. For sure. Have mm-hmm. you been to um, the States? Yes, I have. Did you go to Napa Valley? No, I didn't. That's no, the I place didn't. to go yeah. for wine. Yeah, there you go. And have you been to Barossa in the South Australia? Nah, but I wanted I want to do that. I ha- I haven't had time to get there, but I want to go to the um I want to do Barossa and then I want to I want to do Tassie. Yeah, oh, I want to do Tasmania. I'm there later mm. in the in the month again. There you go. Tassie's great. Yeah, Tassie's amazing. Everyone shits on Tassie because everyone's inbred. Yeah, yeah, there. <laughs> but they're not. They're they're mostly just uh, immigrants from the mainland who just want to get away. Yeah, they're good food, good wine. Oh, Beautiful mate. scenery. And it's not mm. bad, badly priced. Yeah. Petrol price is still shit, but, mm. you know. Um, one other recommendation is Chianti, which okay. is the Italian wine. Okay. It's from that region. Yeah. Yeah, that, I've seen it before. That stuff's good. Yeah. That stuff's good. And I've yeah. got a few. Got one bottle there. Same, That's a cab stab. Same, you go. Yep. Um, but uh, my go-to is Barossa Valley Pepper Jack. Oh, yeah, there you the go. Shiraz. There you go. Shiraz for me is like. The bee's knees. Big and bold. Big and bold or it's too, it tastes like water. (laughs) Scotch man by the look as well. Yeah, Scotch man. Mm. Got a few there and uh, a few other things. But, yeah, this vibe here is just more a a gentleman's club sort of thing. (laughs) It's the right right stuff. Um, Try not to overwhelm it with things, but I want to add some stuff on over time. There you go. The gold and black. So, yeah, um, in summary, where do you see yourself in 10 years after all of this is, I mean, 30, you'll be 37. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. still giving it a crack. Oh, or? no, 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 no. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be done with footy by then, I think. Um, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be a sparky. You'll be. Uh, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully sort of got a family and stuff by then and still in Perth um, and yeah, in, enjoying life, working as a, um, as a sparky or. Anything else, really? Have some kids. Yeah. Travel some more and enjoy Travel it. some more. As well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, might cash in on my one-way ticket to Spain then. Yeah. Around that time. Yeah. But, yeah. no, it looks like you're loving life and it's great. It's good to see. And every time I'm watching the footy, which is very rare now, mm. um, I don't have, I really don't have time. But I'm, like, looking for you, looking for Josh, looking for Oscar mm. um, and just a few others I remember, like, yeah. through the waffle and stuff. And it's always good to see. Um, and then like what's going on there and how your life's going outside of it. No, it's good that you're doing well. Um, sorry to hear about your injuries and right. you're on the men's now. It's part of it. If you had one piece of advice you'd give anyone about anything, what would it be? My my one final question. Oh, mate, I'd, 
<laughs> you can repeat anything you said before. What's something Mate, that you live by? Yeah, I, I, I just it'd be um, never, things are never as good or as bad as they seem. Yeah, I think if you have that attitude in life, then you'll get through it right. Yep, mm. easy, easy. All right, I've got a uh, quick. Going to do some quick shots for you. Um, what's the best thing about your life? Uh, my, I think I've got a good group of uh, family and mates. I've got a great support network. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what words do you always struggle struggle <laughs> to spell correctly? What's that? What words do you struggle to spell um, correctly? Anything that's like longer than four letters usually. <laughs> <laughs> that's every <laughs> AFL player. Uh, if someone assigned you a random job to start, what's the worst career for you? A random job to start. Um, it'd probably be um, – in the middle of the city, sitting in a desk all day. Yeah. That's At the moment, I'm. I feel as I have, I'm too young and have too much energy to sit behind the desk. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a gold one. Mm. Uh, what thing um, that you've made uh, you, you are most proud of? Uh, saying I'm the most proud of. Yeah. Um. I, I guess I. I'd, I'd, I'd like to say I'm pretty proud of. You know the way I've grown up and matured over the last sort of ten years. And I grew up quite early and um, to get to the position I am now, I guess a young, naive kid from Kalgoorlie, I guess I've sort of surprised myself with where I got to. Yeah, 27, mm-hmm. you're doing well. Um, what are your bad habits? Bad habits. Call yourself out uh, it's there. It's probably a question for Brooke, yeah. not me. <laughs> um, shit, bad habits. Uh, apparently I leave stuff. I, I, I'm no good at cleaning the kitchen properly, apparently. <laughs> No, hey, you cook it. You don't have to clean it. <laughs> yeah. um, do you like to plan things out or be spontaneous? Uh, I like to do a bit of both. I think there's an element of things which need to be organised and planned, mm-hmm. but then, you know, there needs to be a spontaneous side to it as well. Yeah. And um, do you read books? Uh, no, it's something I'd like to do more going forward. Though. Yeah. What sort of books would you read if when you start? Um, I'm very, like, I like to read, like, a lot of self development things. I listen to a lot of self-development podcasts or finance podcasts. They're the sort yes. of things that I'm, That's a good that I'm into. Yeah. Mm. Or right. educational things. Yeah. yeah. And then deeper into the, uh, in the, into the AFL questions, um, just again, quick, quick fire. Um, favorite player to play with? Uh, Nick Nat, because yep. he keeps me in a job. Most, an- the ball <laughs> <laughs> Most annoying player to play with? Uh, Elliot Yo talks too much. <laughs> 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 who's got the worst habit on the team? Uh, who's got the worst habit on the team? Oh, Luke Shuey's hamstrings. Yeah. Have the worst habits. He's always injured. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and um, if you could pack one thing with you um, on a flight every game, or what? what is it? What's something that you always m- must have? Um, it, it will be like in, uh, we play a lot of cards. Yeah. That, that kills some time, which is cool. What's the go-to game of cards? Uh, we play Presidents. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is the best game of all time. It's a great game. He's, he's loving it. He, <laughs> I, taught, I taught him how to play. You can play that for hours on it. You can. Yeah. Absolutely lose such, like, track yeah. of time. When I was a school teacher, I taught the kids how to play it. Oh, there you go. And they were just obsessed. Yeah. Every yeah. year group. Yeah. 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 Who's the best at Presidents? Um, Gaffy's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Gaffy's handy. He loves it. He's the one that holds under the cards and takes them. So, yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to say I win my fair share of hands. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I and just never get dealt a good hand. <laughs> I'm just saying, my wife destroys me. <laughs> oh, she really? kills me at it. She absolutely yeah. destroys me. And uh, video games. Nah, I've never been a video gamer. I've never. No. Nah. No. Nah, I remember living in Kalgoorlie, I had Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, and that was about the last time I picked up a remote. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in, Dom. And uh, it's been good to catch up and, uh, yeah, see where you're at. And, mm. yeah, I mean, you're, you're doing super well. The wife, having a wife now, <laughs> having that having that broke a few hearts maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you're always wearing a hat. How's yeah. the hair going? Uh, balding. Balding. Yeah. 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 Balding, and just embrace it. it. Yeah, just embrace it. Yeah, just yeah. embrace it. Yeah. Definitely not Josh Rotham now. You. Nah, nah, no way. But <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. Don't try to be someone I'm not. That's it. Nah, I love mate. it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. All right, guys. Give us uh, some feedback on the episode and uh, let me know 
what you think about it and what, what questions you would have asked, I'll forward it to him and Dom will probably not reply for a few weeks because <laughs> his pre-season's about to start. But yeah, as always, good thanks. <laughs>